Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Ramalia have taken evil. Can, oh, let me, let me back up. I'm, I've just shifted. I'm reading from Isaiah. I want to show you something about Ramalia that's in the book of Isaiah. This same allusion is in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 5 and 6, where Isaiah says, Because Syria, Ephraim, and son of Ramalia have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabeel. You say, okay, that's pretty interesting. Let's assume you're a very zealous student. Who is Tabeel? Find Tabeel in the Bible. You won't, because it's encrypted. Okay? It turns out, I'm quoting from Isaiah here, the word Tabeel is encrypted. This is an encryption in Isaiah 7 that's well known to students of cryptography. We encounter the scheming of Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, the king of Israel. They're confederating against Ahaz, the king of Judah. You get the picture? Northern kingdom in Syria, they're conspiring against Ahaz and Judah. In verse 6 of Isaiah, it says, The plan is to establish the son of Tabeel as king. Who is he? The Midrash, the Hebrew commentary, Notes that Tabeel is the name Ramalia encrypted using the method of Albam. What on earth is Albam? If you take the Hebrew alphabet and you lay it out and take the second half of it and put it under the first half, you now have letter pairs that you can match up. And uh, if I take the first letter, I substitute the, the, the lambda. If I take the beth, the second letter, I take the mem and so forth. If I, by pronouncing A-L-B-M, Albam is the name given to this form of encryption. How does it work? Well, if I take Isaiah 7, 6, the word is Tabeel. So I take the, I, I substitute the matching one. In each case, I substitute the matching letter and uh, take the matching one again. This time it works the other way. And the word Tabeel by Albaum transpositions is the word Ramalia. No big deal to someone that's a student of cryptography. It's provocative that there's an encryption in the Bible. And uh, this is taught, if you take a course at the CIA in cryptography, this will be mentioned as one of the historical uses of, of uh, tra simple transpositions. There's another form, there's an, there's a, there's, this is one form, there's another form called Atbash. That's where you take the Hebrew alphabet, you take the second half and put it under the other one backwards, okay? And so, and by pronouncing this, it's A T B S O Atbash is attempt to pronounce the first four letters. Um, in Jeremiah 25 and 26, we have Shishak, which actually turns out to be a, a, the uh, encryption of the word Babel or Babylon. And uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah 50, 51, the same method is also used where heart of my enemy really turns out to be the, the, the Chaldean, the Chaldeans. No big deal, no profound insights here. To someone that's a student of cryptography, it's just a curiosity of ancient historical use of encryption. To someone who recognizes that the book we're dealing with has supernatural origins, these take on another thing, what, what a, a rabbi would call a remes, a hint of something deeper. And this leads into a whole study of secret writing tucked within the biblical text, which is beyond our scope here, but I just wanted to mention that this this Pekka Ramalia thing, be aware.